first of all say that uh, I was born and raised in a small town in the north coast of the Dominican Republic. I'm the oldest of nine children. Uh, I live in a farm and spend most of my time with my parents and my grandparents who actually had uh, a small piece of land uh, there. I am the oldest, so I was back then the oldest of uh, seven children. And it means that you have a lot of responsibilities uh, uh, taking, looking over your, your brothers and sisters, but also uh, after school doing the errands that uh, you need to do like carrying the water and chasing after animals and so on and so forth. Schools in my hometown only went up uh, to eighth grade uh, in the early 60s when I was growing up there and my parents decided that my mother uh, convinced my father to allow her to come with a tourist visa to New York and three months later he followed. We stayed with my grandparents and they overstay their visa and work in the garment industry and eventually apply to get uh, green cards and then petition seven of us to come. Uh, actually, in uh, January of 1966, uh, we arrived to, to New York City, the East Tremont section of the Bronx. Um, the very week that I arrived, I, I had a job at a bodega and uh, I worked there for uh, for a couple of years, uh, I arrived not knowing a word of English. I had finished my seventh grade in my hometown. And uh, I have to say that transitioning from, from a farm, uh, never having lived in a large city in the Dominican Republic, uh, and coming to New York City was the most traumatic uh, experience uh, of my life. And at that time, there was no bilingual education, so it, it was sink or swim. Uh, the toughest time for me was uh, when I uh, arrived to, to New York City. While it was exciting, it was highly intimidating uh, for me. And I uh, worked all my life, and I have gone to school all my life, uh, working at Bodega when I first got here, as I said, until I was held up. Um, and, and that was my last day working in the bodega and went to work in a supermarket, which I did during my high school years uh, while I was learning. I learned English in, in high school and um, was told that I was not college material by my guidance counselor in the high school I attended in the Bronx. And uh, I believe the guidance counselor and went to work full time in a supermarket. And six months later, my parents said, you're going to college. And it was in college that I was able to rescue a sense of identity, look into Dominican history, looked at Latin American history. I looked at the civil rights movement of the 60s and early 70s. Uh, I was in college uh, during uh, the early 70s. And I paid my way through college driving a taxi. Uh, I drove three three years a gypsy uh, in in the Bronx and northern Manhattan, and two years a yellow, and that's how I paid my way until I graduated to be a teacher uh, in Washington Heights, where I landed uh, to become an activist uh, that eventually led me to where I'm at today. And I landed in Washington Heights, the, uh, the home of Dominicans outside the city of Santo Domingo, uh, to be a teacher. I found myself teaching fifth graders that were fresh off the plane. And 10 years before, uh, they, I was there sitting, except that I was now a bilingual teacher. And I brought to my students the perspective of history and culture that uh, I had learned was so important for them. And in, right after 3 p.m., the parents of my students and other parents in the schools where I was teaching said, we want to run English. 
we we want to learn how to navigate this you know this new uh, neighborhood where we find ourselves and so I became an activist my wife uh, who is also an educator she's now a principal but back then she got training in terms of how to help families with immigration paper so she volunteered her time to help with immigration uh, services to support on a volunteer basis uh, families and reunification and assist families adjusting uh, I focus my energy helping uh, with family literacy, uh, teaching English and the GED to adults in the evening and we help create the first Dominican nonprofit in Washington Heights and found myself organizing families, immigrant families in Northern Manhattan, most of them Dominican and began to engage and mobilize them to improve education, to have bilingual education uh, be established in all the schools in Northern Manhattan. And uh, I was elected for the first time in 1983. And parents, the, uh, we created a parent movement. We mobilized parents and in that single school district in Northern Manhattan, one of 32 districts, we registered half of the parents that were registered in the entire city of New York. Uh, this parent movement in 1985 uh, organized and registered 10,000 parents uh, to demand construction of new schools because we have become the most overcrowded school district. And I was elected three times uh, to the school board. By that time, I was doing teacher training. I was teaching in college. Um, I have finished my uh, master's at City College and I have done a professional diploma in uh, Fordham uh, University when I thought I was going to be a principal. But having been involved as an activist, uh, organizing parents and, fa and families, immigrant families in Northern Manhattan, led to uh, them encouraging me to run for, for office right after the night 2000 census. So in 1989, there was a very important election in, in New York City. And we recall that Mayor Koch wanted to um, extend by one more term, uh, a fourth term as mayor. And uh, we took advantage uh, in Northern Manhattan uh, with the parent movement and went to him and challenged him to commit to build schools uh, to help alleviate overcrowding and he made a public commitment. Uh, that year uh, Mayor Katz uh, lost and Mayor Dinkins got elected so uh, some of us helped uh, supported uh, Mayor uh, Dinkins, others supported Mayor Katz and uh, we build all the schools. We got the commitment with Catch, and we build the schools with Dinkins. And that was thanks to a parent movement, uh, mostly immigrant, newly arrived, many undocumented that decided we want the schools to really improve and we want bilingual education, we want overcrowding to be addressed, not busing children to other parts of the city build the schools, brand new schools, and we got 10 schools built in, in the community thanks to that. So when the census, 2000 census, um, that is the 1990 census, uh, brought us the opportunity to uh, restructure city government, New York City government, and new districts were established. The old Board of Estimate was eliminated, was found unconstitutional, uh, and a new charter was established and 51 districts were established. We advocated to have a district that would have majority Latino Dominican uh, uh, in Northern Manhattan, where we had the largest concentration of Dominicans. And uh, uh, we work aggressively to have that uh, district created, District 10. And I was encouraged to run uh, for that seat. And there were three of us as Dominican that run. There was a white uh, of Greek background that also run. And I was fortunate uh, to receive the majority uh, of support 
uh, and and I was elected. Uh, I think in part because I have been involved uh, in mobilizing and organizing uh, in the community for 15 years, uh, volunteering my time. Uh, and also my fifth graders of the 70s were now of boarding age and they were uh, enthusiastic about their old teacher now uh, running for office and I became uh, in 1991 the first Dominican elected to government position in the United States as a member of the New York City Council which was uh, uh, for me perhaps the biggest challenge that I've faced the responsibility of showing not just Dominicans as a new group uh, and other Latinos because I was uh, being elected as the first Latino immigrant to city government uh, as a member of the city council because up until that point we had eight Latinos in the city council and they were Puerto Rican and Puerto Ricans are uh, part of this country uh, and so I became the first uh, Latino immigrant elected to city government and I was made aware of that immediately because Colombians, Ecuadorians, uh, Cubans, you know, all immigrants saw me representing them as well as an immigrant or were proud of having an immigrant. Uh, not to say that Puerto Ricans were not uh, also representing us as they were uh, and have been prior to my arrival. But it, it was also an, a challenge for me to demonstrate to other ethnicities that came before, whether they were Jewish, that I represented very, in my district there were high percentage of uh, Jewish uh, mm, uh, community in my district, and uh, as well as Irish and all other communities, I was challenged to demonstrate that as a Dominican or as an immigrant or as a Latino, uh, I was I was able to represent them just as well. Uh, now representing a district and representing all New Yorkers, and uh, you know it was it. You know I know that that the door that I walked through and the support that I, I receive by so many of different background and different ethnicities um, that really wanted to have a Dominican come and sit on the table of decision making. Um, they, 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 I needed to demonstrate to them that I, I would be able uh, to represent them and I knew that that was a challenge that I had and that uh, if I didn't do a good job the door could easily close and who knows when the next time will be. Well today we have more than 30 Dominican elected officials in the country in different states in different municipalities and different state governments and we still have some ways to go uh, we have judges that have been elected, about seven or eight of them, uh, primarily in New York City, but in other states as well. And and so we've come a long way in the last 15 years since my my election. I'm very proud of the support that I've received, primarily by by my community and by other Latinos, but across the board from from other uh, ethnicities as well. That that saw me as a voice uh, that wanted uh, opportunities for immigrants. Every, everything that I had to face being in, uh, fresh to this new environment seemed to me as hostile towards me. It demeaned, it diminished uh, what I was and who I was, you know, I was a farm boy. I, I, I knew how to, uh, to, to grow uh, vegetables, I knew how to uh, take, make ends meet, um, I knew I, the skills that I had growing up in a farm 
uh, without shoes. I have one pair of shoes that I will carry on my shoulder to the edge of town. I clean my feet to walk then with shoes when I went to church or when I went to school. But I grew up without shoes as my brothers and sisters uh, did a very poor background. And when I arrived here, first of all, the language that I, that I spoke, which was Spanish, uh, that I read and that I could write with was not an acknowledged. So that, that was of no use to me. All of the experiences that, I, that I've had uh, were rejected by the school system uh, where now I was attending school. And it was highly intimidating for me. Uh, I had to compete with students that knew English. Uh, and I had to take the same test that they had to take in English. It took me about three years to begin to navigate the English language and to be able to begin to cope. Um, and, and so all I knew to do was to be of uh, good behavior. And with good behavior, hopefully that would be acknowledged. And, uh, but it was tough. It was, I felt that my experience as, as an immigrant, as my experience back home was of little value to me. At that time, I felt that, um, that everything re was rejecting what I brought with me. And what that created for me was a huge conflict because I, I thought it, di it diminished my point of view. And not until I began to read much more about Latin America uh, and the Dominican history, the fact that we, we do have uh, Dominicans that have made great contributions and we have Latinos that have made great contribution. And I began to learn about the struggles here of minorities. Then I put in perspective how my parents migrated from the Dominican Republic because of economic circumstances and uh, other Latinos have done so and other immigrants have done so and uh, I put together the context of how this country, the United States, now my country, um, ha has had a history of relationship with Latin America, with the Caribbean. Uh, when I arrived here, uh, my country of origin was Occupy. Well, perhaps the, the, the most challenging period for me uh, transitioning here was uh, the first few years uh, in high school. Uh, my years in high school were very challenging because uh, uh, I, f I felt that none of my experience, uh, having gone through seventh grade in my home country, was of value to me. The, the, it was the system did not really acknowledge and recognize. And in order for me to be able to demonstrate my abilities, I needed to be able to do work in Spanish. And that, you know, we had no bilingual education uh, during the period that I went in the late 60s uh, in, in to high school in the Bronx. and. Uh, that that made it very very challenging uh, for me, if not because of the expectation, high expectation my parents had uh, that they wouldn't take anything, but my going to school uh, at the same time as uh, having to work uh, to help my brothers and sisters and my family uh, make ends meet. Um, I began. I really began. Uh, to uh, to learn English and to be able to write English and to feel more comfortable with the language when I began to do a lot of reading I, I started in college and I began to be I, I, I became active as a student at City College where, where I attended uh, in from 70 to 75 and I think that activism uh, and the influence that the student movement had for me uh, put a lot of things in perspective uh, for me. I, I view myself as a minority in this country, as an immigrant, 
uh, as someone that uh, was not here by coincidence, but that there was a connection between this country and my home country, the Dominican Republic, as it was with the rest of Latin America, and therefore the rest of other countries that were uh, having uh, immigrants come here. I knew that my parents uh, arrived here and were able to work uh, undocumented first uh, because there was a demand for the workforce here. And, and so my parents were undocumented. I later on realized that I was now here to stay, that I was part of this country and that I was not going to go back home. Uh, and uh, that's, that's how I came out from college and landed as a teacher. And I chose teaching because it was so traumatic for me to land in the schools in New York City coming from my home country that I wanted to make a difference for immigrant students coming. To let you give you an idea of how successful we were reducing violence and crime, uh, the 119 people that were killed in 1990 related to violence in that neighborhood was reduced to seven people killed in 1998 after years of work with the community and its leadership and of course uh, the leadership uh, in the city uh, under Mayor Giuliani, which focused a lot on aggressive policing, uh, was in the, in the mix and in the context. But Washington Heights experienced the highest drop in crime in the city of New York and probably in the country uh, with that dramatic re reduction. Today, it's one of the most attractive and beautiful neighborhood and we now have different problems. We have gentrification because now everybody wants to go. Before they would come to buy drugs, now they want to come and buy property. They want to buy uh, uh, homes, uh, actually apartments, cooperative, and they want to have businesses there and they want to live there. Uh, so people who've seen uh, the worst of it are now feeling squeezed and that, that's the type of headache. That, that we have nowadays. Mm -hmm.